Hello students, welcome to lesson three where we are going to learn about ecosystem dynamics. So let's dive in. So when we, uh, the first thing you're going to do here is start with a bell ringer as directed by your teacher. Here you're going to discuss and list as many words as you can that include the prefix geo, bio, atmo, and hydro. After you identify those terms, and your teacher may only assign one of those terms, after you um, decide or create your list, you're going to derive a definition using your list of words as a guide to help you come up with a definition about that prefix that you are assigned. After doing that, uh, your teacher will likely ask you for um, some answers, so be prepared to uh, present those. All right, so in this lesson 3.1, we are going to look at Earth's major spheres and how they actually support life. So um, what you're going to know when you're done is the four major spheres of Earth and understand how nutrient cycles and energy actually flow through those spheres. So some of the key terms we'll address, geosphere, atmosphere, troposphere, stratosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, greenhouse effect that's a lot of spheres but let's dive in all right so the first sphere that we are going to consider is the geosphere when we look at the prefix geo geo means land or earth all right and sphere is just like what it sounds it's a sphere all right so in this case the sphere is referencing the solid portion of the earth the land or earth portion of the earth not all parts are solid as you're going to see here, the inner core, the liquid solid boundary between the inner core and outer core, is, there's a lower and upper mantle and the crust. So you have an inner core, which is the liquid solid boundary between the inner core and the outer core. You have the lower and upper mantle, and then you have the crust. Three main parts of the geosphere. The geosphere actually forms the planet's mass. And without that mass, everything on the planet would basically just float out into space because we need that mass to essentially hold our Earth in place. So the gravitational pull from what was once a, initially a small mass until the Earth accumulated and acquired the remaining pieces of its mass during its early life, the gravitational pull eventually grew larger and in turn pulled in more large chunks of what are now making up our Earth. So that's a gist of the geosphere. So let's dive in a little bit further. The upper part of our geosphere contains nutrients that um, allow us as organisms, not just us, but all other organisms, to live, grow, and reproduce. Geosphere also contains some of those non-renewable fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, and it also has other mineral resources. Keep in mind as we look through this, there are a lot of key terms here like fossil fuel and non-renewable that you need to make sure you understand so you're prepared for your assessment. So you can see over here on the right hand side some of those ingredients in terms of fossil fuels include all of these different types of fuels and minerals that we actually need um, in order to um, live basically the lives that we live in a modern society. So here you have this um, these um, active oil pumps that you can see. So some oftentimes we hear about oil extraction, but we sometimes may have not or never seen them if they're not in our local area. So the next sphere is the atmosphere, and that's held together um, due to, again, that gravitational force that is a result of that geosphere. The atmosphere's gases basically surround the planet in various layers. So the atmosphere is responsible for blocking a lot of the sun's harmful UV radi radiation because of this ozone layer that's actually in the atmosphere. The ozone layer is actually a beneficial layer that traps the uh, or prevents some harmful radiation from reaching the earth and really destroying us and our skin, 
So there are times you may have heard there's a hole in the ozone layer. Well, that's not a good thing. If there's a hole in the ozone layer, that will result in us getting a lot of excess radiation, and that can cause a lot of problems for our bodies. All right, so there, um, there are five layers um, to the atmosphere. We're going to focus on the two closest to the Earth. Five layers um, include from closest to the Earth, so starting closest to the Earth, down here, us on Earth, we live and exist in the troposphere. As we go up from there, you're going to have the stratosphere, the mesosphere, thermosphere, and then eventually the exosphere. Here you can see some point of references listed in miles um, from the Earth. All right, over here, if it's more scientifically appropriate, listed in kilometers. So you can kind of get a feel for the, how large these layers actually are. As mentioned, we live in the troposphere. So let's look at the troposphere. The troposphere is the lowest layer of the atmosphere. It's where weather occurs. And this is only a layer where terrestrial life can survive. So organisms that live on the Earth. The troposphere is thickest at the equator, and it goes about 12 miles above sea level at the equator. The troposphere also goes up about 4 miles at the North and South Pole. The next sphere is the stratosphere. So again, that's the second layer of the atmosphere. Nothing lives in this layer. Um, the lowest part of the strat stratosphere is actually going to contain that ozone layer that we mentioned earlier that protects us from harmful radiation. It is actually just oxygen molecules, um, three of them hooked together, and um, as a result, they're able to block a lot of harmful radiation from hitting us. So the ozone does exist in other parts of the stratosphere, but 90% is in the stratosphere so that's often what it's recognized for so keeping in mind so far as we've gone up in elevation at this point we have essentially um, gone as we go up in elevation pardon me the temperature decreases as we go up in elevation so far the pressure also decreases as well. So if you think about that, if you're climbing up a mountain, the air gets thinner and it gets colder. So that's because you have lower pressure as you go up in elevation, and also you have colder temperatures. All right, so the next sphere we're gonna mention is the hydrosphere. Now, as far as the uh, atmosphere, um, there are some other activities that you'll be working on to explore some of those other layers. The hydrosphere includes um, glaciers, lakes, rivers, aquifers, water vapor, clouds, and oceans. So the hydrosphere is basically, looking at that prefix water, anywhere there is water on the earth. The hydrosphere also contains gaseous liquid, uh, all the gases, liquids, and solid water on or near the Earth's surface. So, since our ocean dominates surface water at about 96.5%, um, it covers about 71% of the surface of the Earth. Um, but most of the surface water that we are able to see on the surface, 96% of that belongs to oceans. Um, and about 3% of the water on the earth is fresh water and most of it is frozen as glaciers and ice caps which is um, actually starting to they're quickly declining as global temperatures increase over here you can see a distribution of how water kind of is found on our planet and you can see um, a breakdown of at the top here fresh water that's water that we can drink generally um, without uh, taking salt out, and then the rest is the ocean. So in terms of the whole globe. Now if we look at the breakdown of fresh water, notice most of our fresh water is stored in those glaciers and ice caps. 30% is found in groundwater, and then only 1.3% is in the fresh water. 
And then when we look at the fresh water, you can see about 20% found in lakes, 73.1% um, um, from ice and snow, and then the rest kind of found in a variety of other locations in much smaller levels. Like look at rivers, very small amount, 0.46%. As massive as some rivers can be that that might be surprising to you the next sphere is the biosphere so it's the sphere where life actually exists so if you think of earth as an apple the biosphere is only about as thick as the skin on an apple our biosphere is where living things exist and it can it contain or does contain the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere, all within those, uh, within the realm of that biosphere or where life can exist. So it's the part of the earth where life exists. All right, that will conclude our day one notes.